G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's the big one, the grand final preview slash just the tips slash predictions video uh, where we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming game on Saturday naturally and uh, of course everything that will go down and all the major factors going into the game before ultimately providing a prediction. Before we crack into it, I am within striking distance of hitting 22,000 subscribers by grand final day. I think about 87 short. So if you guys could do me a favor, if you are enjoying the content, if you consider hitting subscribe, obviously it's completely free and you keep up to date with my content, which will be going well and truly past grand final day with the trade period and draft stuff coming. So if you could help me hit the goal of 22,000, that would be amazing. Thank you very much. So here we are, the grand final, uh, first versus second on the ladder, the indisputable best two teams uh, throughout the 2023 season this year. It is going to be a tasty matchup as it's been talked about. It's been 20 years since these two sides last met in the grand final in 2003. Of course, they also met in 02, and the Lions were too good in both of those grand finals. It does feel like there's a little bit of a different vibe to this one in the sense that I could be remembering it wrong, but it felt like Collingwood was more punching above their weight a little bit. You know, Port Adelaide was probably the other big team around that era. Ironically, Port Adelaide was a big contender this year as well, so the top four was pretty similar to what it was 20 years ago. But the Lions were absolutely the team to beat, and this year, I wouldn't say there is a clear team to beat out of these two sides. And when you factor in the home ground advantage that Collingwood have in particular, I think this is a very, very interesting grand final, and I think it's going to be close. We haven't been blessed with a lot of close grand finals in recent years. I think the last one was 2018. I can't remember exactly the stat, but I think the average margin for uh, grand final wins is about 70 points since then. 74 and 21, what was it, 80 something last year? It was 89 points, I think, in 2019. It's been ludicrous. We haven't been blessed for with a really good grand final, say for maybe 2020, that was pretty good. 21 was good, but didn't end up being close, but so far to say, I think this will be an absolutely thrilling grand final, probably pretty low scoring, and I'll get into why in a little bit. Obviously, you consider the form of these two teams. The Pies first, obviously, overcame a really, really tough prelim against the Giants. Not many people maybe expected the Giants to challenge them quite in that way. The Pies got the fast start, couldn't quite keep their dominance on the scoreboard, and the Giants sort of started to kick away a little bit before Collingwood, and along with their uh, amazing home crowd, obviously, willed them back into the contest for a start, and then they uh, ended up deserving winners and it's good to see them in the grand final but an interesting stat is that the the Pies have really struggled to kick really big winning scores this year it's probably not been an absolute strength of theirs and that's on show in this uh, final series with a score of 60 in the qualifying final which ended up being a winning score and 58 and I think they're the number two ranked defense this year so choking the opposition um, in terms of their forward entries has been a strength of Collingwood here but I think it will be an Achilles heel going into this game against a side that does have a lot of scoring power. By contrast, the Lions obviously uh, had to overcome a really slow start against the Blues. They look like the certainly the worst of two teams after the first quarter. I think Carlton kicked the first five goals before the Lions really started to get a stranglehold on them, particularly in clearances. And by half time, it was clear which team was uh, was better in my opinion. But winning scores of 123 and 79 so far in this final series do show that uh, there is a quite a difference in that particular aspect of football, putting high scores on the board. So the Lions will have that advantage. First of all, you consider the head-to-head which makes a really interesting reading. The Lions have won all six of the last six clashes between these two sides. Four of those were at the Gabba and two of them at Marvel Stadium. So these sides haven't actually met at the MCG in any recent period where it would be relevant to this conversation because obviously you need to contemplate uh, you know, how teams go at particular grounds and the Lions, while they have been good against Collingwood, haven't actually beat them at the MCG. The last time they met at the MCG was 2017. This was before, well, it might have been Fagan's first, no, no, it wouldn't have been. Sorry, yes, it was. it was. I think it was Fagan's first year at the helm, and obviously the Lions uh, were still irrelevant. I say that with respect, and the Pies won that by 45 points. Traditionally, you know, with the form lines between these two sides, when they've met, Collingwood has uh, struggled to limit Brisbane's scoring. And since 2021, the, the side that the Collingwood has conceded the most points against out of anyone in the competition by some distance is the Brisbane Lions. Interestingly, the second team was Hawthorne. They concede an average of nearly 111 points per game when they're playing Brisbane. So this is an interesting one where the Lions seem to match up well against Collingwood's weaknesses. Some of those scores that they've conceded against the Lions, uh, particularly this Lions side in that six loss stretch, have been 124, 116, and 142, which in the modern game are all very, very high scores. So we've got an interesting me meeting of two sides here where Brisbane is the number two scoring team in the competition. Collingwood is the number two defensive team in the competition. So that in itself makes for an interesting matchup where it comes down to how well Collingwood can quell Brisbane's ability to score. Between these two sides over the last five matches, Lockie Neal, uh, unsurprisingly, 
currently is rated as the best player when these two sides meet over the last five games, according to FinalSiren.com. Again, you know, I'm, I'm recording this before the official teams are out. However, there has been some news with regard to match selection. Unfortunately, Taylor Adams has been ruled out. This has also been bad for my game day squad. If you saw yesterday's video, I uh, brought him back into the team. So I'm going to have to make that change. Obviously, Dan McStay will also tragically not be available for this game. So Adams and McStay are two reasonably big outs for the Pies. Billy Frampton was apparently... Uh, playing as a forward in match simulation drills, which means that he may be the forward target in replace of McStay, we'll see. For the Lions, we do know that there's an injury cloud over Jack Payne, who they, I was I read a report that said he was 70% chance of playing. Uh, Darcy Gardner came in for him in the prelim, and uh, he hadn't played since round 13, but he played really well as well. So the Lions do have some options there. And there's also, you know, Jack Gunston's racing to be fit for this game after an injury, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if he gets back into this team that is playing well. Do you mix with that formula? The other aspect of this game that uh, will be quite pivotal as to who wins, I would argue, is the, probably the clearance battle. And we know that the Lions are a very, very strong midfield group, at least statistically. They're the uh, number one in the league for clearance di differential, and Lockie Neal is the top clearance player in the league. They're number two uh, for scores from stoppage. I presume that's behind Carlton. And number three for scores from stoppage differential. So this will be another aspect of the game that uh, Collingwood would need to quell Brisbane at. And uh, I highlighted that as an obstacle for them in the prelim coming up against a very strong Giants midfield however even with Taylor Adams out they uh, they won the clearance battle heavily Jordan Dugowie I think is going to be a super important player we know he's a big game player he plays well in finals played well in the grand final that he played in in 2018 kicked three goals now he's probably going to be playing more of a midfield role he will certainly be a key pivotal player particularly in big moments for this particular game for the Pies for the Pies they've done a great job to you know get back into a grand final they, almost, they dip down the ladder and five years later they're back into the grand final there's 10 players I believe, likely to be playing in this game that played in that 2018 clash. Obviously, for the Lions, there's going to be a whole host of players that haven't played in the grand final. Uh, Lockie Neal comes to mind as someone who has for Fremantle. Jack Gunston potentially is going to be playing too. Charlie Cameron is another one that played for Adelaide, and there's probably more, but that's just uh, the ones off the top of my head. And I think for the Lions, the MCG hoodoo is something that they really need an answer to pretty quick. Now, we've seen that in recent times, the MCG form has been improved, I suppose. We had we saw a uh, bad loss to Hawthorne earlier this year, but the last two clashes against the Demons, they didn't really seem to struggle with the dimensions of the ground by any stretch. They beat them in last year's semi-final, and then this year got very, very close to beating them. Really should have shut the uh, Demons out of the game. But long story short, the, uh, if you score 104 points at the MCG, I think you probably have demonstrated that you can somewhat play that ground. So it all becomes matchups, and it's this, like I said, is intriguing because these two sides haven't met at this ground for a very long time. So it's time to offer a prediction with all of that context and uh, foreshadowing um, what sort of predictions are we going to do uh, apparently it's going to be a really hot grand final for a start uh, but I don't really know who that favours and I suppose you could say the Lions are probably acclimatised to heat a little bit more but Collingwood do have an extra day break um, yeah who knows? So we'll start with first goal. I'm going to sort of try and map out how I think this game is going to go. Obviously, it's uh, try, uh, really silly to try and get that right, but why not? It's grand final. I'll try and predict the pattern of the game. But first of all, I think Collingwood will get a fast start in this game. I think with the crowd roaring, they'll start like they did much the same in the prelim. Much as they did in the last grand final they played in, they'll, uh, they'll probably be the first to adapt well to the atmosphere. I'm going to say that we see a Joe Danaher shank early in the game. Uh, he'll, he'll miss one that he probably should get and sort of will be able to tell that the Lions look a little bit rattled. That's what I'm expecting will happen early. Collingwood will get the first goal and I think it will be through Mason Cox. But in similar Collingwood fashion, I think the scoring power has been a bit of a weakness this year. Their killer instinct to really put teams away when they have dominance is probably the one thing that they've struggled to do this year. And therefore, I think while Collingwood will dominate the first term, they'll only kick three goals. But they will keep the Lions goalless in the first quarter. So I'm predicting a fast start for Collingwood, but they leave a few goals on the table and then the Lions start to get a bit of a midfield dominance through the second and third terms. Maybe they're a little bit behind at halftime before eventually in the third term starting to kick away a little bit. And I think the Lions will be in front by two or three goals at three quarter time. But with the roaring home crowd, I reckon Collingwood will come back hard. They might even hit the front and it will be an absolute arm wrestle. And I just don't see this game not being close. I think in previous grand final previews, I, we've predicted um, if there was going to be a belting in this grand final, which way would it go? And I think it's really tough this year 
I don't think anyone predicted a belting in last year's grand final, but at least you can point to Geelong's scoring power and be like, okay, if they're getting a bit of dominance, then you can see how Geelong win by a large margin. Maybe not 80 points. That was quite ridiculous. In this grand final, I don't see a belting really, really possible either way. Like I said, Collingwood potentially the more likely if Brisbane just don't show up as the interstate team. But with their history of not really, you know, smashing teams this year, I just, I can't see them really making this a really dull contest. Maybe maybe they win by 40 points. That's possible. But I don't think we'll see that 60 plus win here from Collingwood. Equally, the Lions, uh, while they do have the scoring power, they are playing away from home and against, you know, one of the best defensive teams in the competition. So I can't see them putting up a massive score in this game either. But to nip back to my prediction, I think it'll be a seesawing contest and I don't know why. I've been saying Collingwood all year, but I think I'm going to tip the Brisbane Lions to win this game by two points, which would make it one of the best grand finals of the modern era. Like I said, we haven't been blessed with too many lately. Uh, controversially though, Jordan Dugowie is going to be the best player of field and he'll win the Norm Smith in a loss. And I think the Lions will be premiers for 2023. Who am I going for? Uh, I'm fairly neutral, but I do tend to go for the team that uh, hasn't won a premiership more recently. I do tend to go for the interstate side as well. And I do think it would be a great story for Fagan to come in uh, when the Brisbane Lions were on their knees as an organization and come in and win a premiership. He's the second uh, coach to coach in a grand final that hasn't played at the elite level. He's also the oldest grand final coach ever at 62. Not that that is relevant to who I'm going to go for, but I think I'm going to be slightly barracking for the Lions and I think they will win. I don't know. I just, it's just a gut feeling, but you know, if I trusted my gut feeling every time this year, I would have terrible tipping. Oh wait, that's exactly what happened. But anyway, guys, those are my predictions. Let me know in the comments section what you think will happen. I want to hear your first goal, who you're barracking for as well, the winner, the margin, and the Norm Smith medal. But I'm very excited, guys. I've got to get up here at, uh, at about 5 a.m. to start watching this game. I don't think I'm going to live stream it, unfortunately. However, I might do a little vlog of my reaction throughout the game, so we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts and predictions, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.